So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good to have had, had a chance to say hello and visit with a number of you beforehand, friends and in the community and members of ICCR and many of the folks that we dialogue with. Just a quick word of thanks on behalf of the Board of Directors for your continued support of our work. Uh, without you, it would not be possible. So we are extremely grateful for your generosity on so many occasions and your cooperation. My job is fairly simple this afternoon because I'm offering and presenting this award to Tim Smith. Where are you, Tim? I like to say that Tim has the best of both worlds, you know, because he came down from Canada and brought all that rich uh, tradition and levity and dedication and passion uh, to this organization from the very beginning and was able to infuse that in so many ways into the membership, the direction of the organization, uh, and uh, not lose a beat in my estimation. He's to be complimented, certainly, I think, from, from moving from New York to Boston. I think he did it at the right time. Uh, With the Red Sox doing well. Yeah. That's right, Tim, yeah. We did win a World Series right after you moved up that way, I think. And uh, we, uh, notwithstanding last night's game in the Bronx, uh, we're uh, still out there and doing the best we can. So we're grateful for all you have done and the many gifts that you've brought to the organization over the years and the way in which you continue to... Uh, do that. Let me, uh, I should, I think, put some glasses on. That's probably, although I'm feeling really good today. I had a bad head cold yesterday and didn't show up. And then I went to the teller at the subway this morning and I asked for a senior ticket. And she looked and she says, who's the senior? Oh, good line. All right. All right. No, you're feeling a lot better. Yeah. And then I arrived at ICCR and I said, how do I look? And they said, windblown. I said, I didn't know there was anything up there to blow. <laughs> anyway, there you go. I'll put the glasses on. Resolved that through the granting of the 2016 Legacy Award, all ICCR members recognize the contributions of Timothy Smith in advancing the mission of our organization to ensure more just and sustainable corporations. Whereas a, as an original staff member and longtime executive director during ICCR's most formative period, Tim laid the foundation of our coalition and helped pioneer shareholder advocacy and corporate responsibility movements. While he left ICCR staff in 2000 to work for member Walden Asset Management, Tim has remained one of our coalition's most active members and continues to play a pivotal role in virtually every ICCR program area. And it's amazing how he amasses all of that information and brings it together, all of those threads of different issues. And we, don't have, we only have a few issues at ICCR, you understand. But Tim is managing to weave all of those threads together so often in a way that helps the rest of us uh, go forward. He's broadly respected both inside ICCR as a, and outside as a leading voice for justice. The recipient of numerous industry awards and a valued mentor and colleague, Tim has been, had a profound impact on the field of responsible investing and is our resident guru on all matters concerning corporate engagement and proxy access. Sister Nora Nash so eloquently said, today Tim still mentors, inspires, leads, engages, and encourages individuals, investors, and corporations to be more committed to systemic change and sustainability. As ICCR members, we are all grateful to you, Tim, for your valued leadership, your, colleagues at, your colleague at Walden, Aaron Zulikowski, simply said, simply put, Tim has proven over and over again to be a successful champion for a, most just, for a more just and sustainable world. His passion, energy, and commitment are equaled only by his generosity of time and wise counsel to executives, advocates, colleagues, and friends. At Walden, we are honored and humbled to share in this journey with him. With typical humility, Tim has said, and it's also written in your program today, those of us who daily seek to be leaders in sustainable and responsible impact investing stand on the shoulders of ICCR. Yet it is we who daily stand on Tim Smith's shoulders. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Say a few words. I uh, appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank you, Seamus. I'm thanking all of you as I'm trying to see you. The lights. Uh, well, thank you very, very much. Uh, many thanks to ICCR for choosing me along with Bill for the ICCR Legacy Award tonight. Um, as you can imagine, it's a very moving experience for me to receive this honor. And of course, Seamus, the gold Rolex that goes with it. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't know what to do with the Rolex anyway. But um, it's wonderful to see so many friends and allies here for this event. On a personal level, I'm glad my wife Susan Gannon came down from Boston and my son Matthew Kirby Smith migrated over from Brooklyn to be uh, with us and my colleague Aaron Zolkowski from Walden representing the broader Walden family. So appreciate them being here. Uh, getting this award or telling me that I was to receive this award tonight uh, made me reflect a lot as you can imagine about what it meant to carry on the ICCR legacy. Um, when I left ICCR 16 years ago, uh, after 30 years uh, working with it and working with the ICCR community, um, and when I say community, I mean the members, the investors, our NGO partners, and the many companies who put their shoulder to the wheel to advance multiple corporate responsibility issues. You know, only with multiple different constituencies working together in a common direction can we really make a difference and move this mission forward. I learned a tremendous amount over those three decades. I was pleased to be able to have an impact uh, in part on issues like South Africa, infant formula abuse, diversity, climate change, and as Seamus said, the multiple other issues that ICCR worked on. We, we laugh at the ICCR family. There was, there's never been a, a corporate responsibility issue we didn't like, so we have to work hard to limit ourselves. For some reason, when I heard about this award, my mind turned to the business case for continuing to carry on ICCR's mission, work, and legacy. And some of you may be aware that ICCR works hard to define a thoughtful, cogent, business case for the issues we work on, um, whether it be climate change or supply chain work, human trafficking or water, um, we try to talk uh, not only about the moral and social uh, justice issues that Josh talked about, but also the sensible business logic behind this. So I said to myself, why should I, and then I ask you, or any of us in this room strive to live uh, live by and advance ICCR's legacy. What is the business case? So I'm going to share some thoughts that I want you to think about what is driving you to be part of uh, carrying on this legacy. So number one, there is no choice but to carry on this legacy. The legacy of ICCR gets in your blood. It's inspired by faith and committed to action, our, our slogan. It becomes part of your mindset and vocation. It doesn't let you go. And in a strange way, it's a wonderful compulsion. Number two, the issues we work on are compelling both from a social and an environmental point of view, and they're common sense for business and society. Now, of course, our common sense doesn't ring true for some in the halls of power who fight back against the work we're doing on issues like climate or political spending disclosure or many other issues. But from our point of view, uh, when our eyes are open to the centrality of these issues, it compels us to keep on working. And that's part of advancing the, the legacy. And I, I want to say for my third point, I want to acknowledge, unfortunately, the sister Barbara Ayers is out ill today. So please, uh, a note to her that I, uh, she was part of a shout out at this uh, presentation. So I don't want you to forget this motivating force. Would you want Sister Barbara Ayers or Seamus Finn yelling at you if you drop the ball, yelling at the top of their voice, don't drop the ball, this legacy is too important to no ignore. Now that's frightening to imagine because Seamus would do this in a strong Irish brogue too, so that gets in. And uh, fourthly, uh, reminded by Sister Barbara, uh, one of her uh, catching uh, phrases, we are people of hope inspiring us to look at seemingly impossible hurdles with uh, companies or government policies or issues, but just to keep on keeping on. We are people of hope. We must keep the legacy alive. So in this work, we're also motivated by our 
our partnerships with NGOs and individuals, other investors, uh, to work on things like child and forced labor, the kind of work David Schilling has, has done so incredibly well. We're, we're called to preserve and protect our environment, God's earth, and we're protecting the public and communities from predatory practices by companies who were acting irresponsibly. That's part of our business case. We're also fortified in our business case by our work with companies who step out and up in their work on climate change or diversity or LGBT rights or human trafficking. So it matters tremendously, and I'm just gonna choose one example of thousands, but it happened last week. Aaron and I were celebrating it as we can point to companies like General Motors, Bank of America, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, and Walmart, I think too, Aaron, who are pub publicly committed to sourcing all of their electricity, 100% from renewable energy. Now that's inspiring to us. It's part of what motivates us to work on. So finally, we're also emboldened by our work with other investors. Now these investors may be state and city pension funds, they could be foundations, they could be mutual funds like Domini Social Investments, they could be investment managers, uh, but they have literally trillions of dollars of assets under management, much different uh, than the days when, uh, uh, 45 years ago when ICCR started, where um, these investors gradually uh, learning to step up and use their voice and vote to speak out on things like board diversity and human rights. It matters deeply when we have investors like this who speak the language of fiduciary responsibility as they support work on human rights or climate. So these are a few of my thoughts about the business case, but I want to uh, leave that thought with you about asking you to reflect and mentally add your personal examples of why you would want to be participating in and carrying on the legacy of ICCR. In short, it isn't a choice. The legacy becomes part and parcel of one's work and life, doesn't it? I have worked with <clears throat> my, an investment firm, Walden Asset Management, for the last 16 years. Walden strives to be a leader in sustainable and responsible investing and works actively to promote social and environmental change. Our role in our advocacy is a secular one. We manage investments for clients in ways that reflect their values. These clients may be an individual, a foundation, a religious institution, a university, a pension fund. We're also active share owner advocates working on dozens of issues and making sure our voice as an investor is heard in company boardrooms. But in doing so, we often make common cause with ICCR and its members joining in company engagements or public statements and shareholder advocacy. In that sense, Walden Asset Management stands on the shoulders of ICCR, which for 45 plus years have been leaders in setting examples for and inviting cooperation with other investors. So, as you can see, the legacy of ICCR is infectious. It becomes part of what we do as investors. So I end here thanking you and ICCR for this legacy award, which I accept personally, but I also accept on behalf of Walden Asset Management, a unique company that supports me daily as I put ICCR's spirit and legacy to work in our work at Walden. Let us all commit to embracing and living this legacy. We can do no other. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs>